So my beautiful girlfriend Tristan and I were recently watching an episode of The Office where it was brought to Michael Scott's attention that he romanticizes relationships a little bit too much. And this got me thinking, does Michael Scott have borderline personality disorder? Is up everybody this is Chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and if you're new to my channel there's a few things that I love doing I love talking about movies TV shows and seeing what lessons we can learn from them but I'm also very passionate about mental health so if you're into that kind of stuff make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so to get this thing started for I don't know full disclosure I don't think that Michael Scott has borderline personality disorder, but I do think some of the symptoms that he has, people who might be watching this, if you struggle with borderline personality disorder, you might be able to relate, or if you know somebody who struggles with borderline personality disorder. Another disclaimer, I am not a licensed therapist or psychologist or anything like that. I just like to have some fun learning about mental health, watching TV characters, and trying to analyze them and see what I can learn from them or if I can relate to them in any ways. Now, there is a video I have planned in the future because uh, my girlfriend found this like, really in-depth article that kind of argued that Michael Scott is a narcissist and it was like a really in-depth thing. So I want to do a video on that and like kind of break it down. But um, I don't even know if he's, if he's a narcissist, but there are some things that I do want to talk about in that realm, just Michael Scott's like need for attention. But anyways, let's talk about his relationships because one of the one of the symptoms, one of the, the common symptoms of borderline personality disorder, but you don't even need BPD to have this symptom. A lot of people do, where it's like this intense, this intense feeling of like love and attraction. So in the episode that I'm referring to, I think it was from season eight, maybe season seven, where I think uh, it was Pam who brought it to Michael Scott's attention that he like falls deep in love very, very quickly. And they kind of like go through the gambit of all the women he's dated throughout the seasons and his intense emotions that he felt for them. So first, you know, he had a thing, you know, kind of for Jen, but then he started dating his real estate agent. And he, he ended up like proposing to her on the third or fourth date. So for any of you, hold on, cats are doing stuff. What? Not now. Not, don't smell my finger. Get out of here. Sorry about that. But anyways, like, I just talked about this in the video I did about Pete Davidson and just understanding what BPD is like and falling deep in, in love and really, um, you know, having like a fear of abandonment and sometimes like there's quick engagements and things like that. But anyways, then the next relationship he got in was with his superior. Jan, right? So he ended up dating Jan and really falling for her. And like, there was this like kind of back and forth tug of war because he really wanted the relationship even though Jan didn't. And it's because he felt such intense feelings for her, all right? Then going on, like there were some others, you know, in between, like he ended up dating Pam's mom for a little while. But then he, um, he fell for the woman who worked at like the Dave and Buster's like knockoff. And then he realized that he was the other man and everything, but he really fell for her hard too. But I think, you know, one of the biggest examples is Holly. By the way, don't spoil it for me. I'm still in the middle of season eight and I think they just kissed again for the first time. But anyways, I think that one's a little bit, a little bit different of a scenario. Like he did fall for Holly very quickly, but here's the thing. So if you're somebody who struggles with this, like I used to way back in the day, like I would feel very intensely for like, uh, you know, women I would just start dating and just meeting like, like, oh my God, someone t showed me attention. Someone's attracted to me. Oh my God, right? But anyways, when he first met Holly and he started developing feelings for her, like he had to sit down with Jim. And like, I think this is a great tip for anybody who can relate to this. Like Jim was like constantly there as like an accountability partner saying like, yo, Michael, take it slow, take it slow. Like you dive into things way, way too quickly with women, take it slow. And I think that's good too. Like I think any of us who struggle with our mental health and intense emotions, we should have people around us where we can bounce things off of. We let them know exactly how we're feeling. We let them know how we're thinking, right? And then we say, do you think this is a good idea, right? Like this is something that I just think everybody should do. Like everybody should do this. Like whether it's with a support group, whether it's with your therapist, whether it's with like a sponsor or a mentor or whoever it is. Maybe it's like uh, one of your parents or an older sibling or just somebody like bounce ideas off of like, like 
for anybody out there who's like me, who struggles with mental health issues and the way that your brain kind of processes things, like, there's no better way to, to overcome some of the mistakes that we make than to bounce those off other people. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, sometimes, this thing is our own worst enemy. But anyways, yeah, like, I wanted to make this, this video because, like, a lot of us can relate to this. Like, borderline personality disorder or not, like, a lot of us, we don't just, like, feel things, like, we feel things. And the difference with people who don't have um, what they call equanimity um, is like when, when let's say you go out on the first date, right? Like most people, when they go out on a first date, they're like, oh yeah, you know, like they, they tell their friends like, oh yeah, I liked them. I might go on a second date with them, kind of feel things out, see where things go, but it went well, right? But other people who feel very intensely like a Michael Scott, or maybe you if you're watching this, or maybe somebody you know, like they, they don't react in that same way. During that first date, thoughts are running through their head like, oh my God, I wonder what it will be like to marry this person. What kind of house will we get? What will our wedding be like? Ooh, I wonder if their parents will like me. Ooh, do they have a good family? Like, are, is their family gonna like me? Oh, I wonder how many kids they want. How many kids are we gonna have? What should we name our kids? Where should we move? Well, what if I get a job over here? Would they move with me? Oh, you know what? I wonder if they like to travel. We should travel. You know what I mean? Like, we create this whole narrative like on like the first date and we obsess about it. And this story that we create in our own mind can intensify those emotions even more. And why is this an issue? Why is this an issue? It's an issue for a few reasons, okay? One of them is, is that it sets us up for failure, right? Like feeling that intensely about somebody, like, you know, on the, on the first date or very early on, it can set us up for failure because most people have these more balanced emotions where they do kind of take things slow and everything like that. Unless you just happen to run into somebody who has similar issues as you and then like you're both extremely in love. The reason why uh, that comes to mind is working the, in the drug and alcohol treatment center I was working at, like I saw this a lot. I saw this a lot because one of the reasons this happens with drug addicts and alcoholics so often is you take away drugs and alcohol, right? Drugs and alcohol are something that give you massive bursts of dopamine. You take that away, the mind is now craving dopamine, and uh, another way of getting dopamine is love, attention, affection, compliments. You see what I mean? Sex is one of them as well. So it's very common for addicts and alcoholics in very early recovery to have these intense emotions for somebody else because their brain is trying to, to get that dopamine fix that they're no longer getting from drugs and alcohol. Now, the other reason that this is an issue and having such intense emotions, and this is something that people with borderline personality disorder struggle with, is, is that intense fear of abandonment, which then turns into a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me explain what I, what, what I mean by that. So, for example, Michael Scott, going back to when he proposed to his girlfriend, like on the fourth date or whatever. So his intense emotions, possibly a fear of abandonment, trying to lock her down in a relationship, like that fear of abandonment makes you do something so extreme that it actually makes the person distance themselves from you. So I've seen this happen a lot of times, how I even did it back in my younger days, where you feel such intense emotions towards that other person that you're texting them all day, every day. You're calling them all day, every day. You wanna spend so much time with them because your brain is just obsessed with that person and you can't stop thinking about them. So you're constantly in their face. And here's the issue and why that leads to a problem is because that can freak other people out. You see what I mean? Like, I didn't realize it, like, because I, I, I feel, and again, I'm not a licensed therapist or psychologist, I've worked with people with borderline personality disorder and other uh, versions of mental illness at the treatment center I was at, but in my opinion, like, a lot of people who are struggling with this, like, they, they can't control it, but they also have this justification in their brain of like, well, if I'm that attracted to somebody, if I feel that strongly about somebody, if I want the person that much, if I feel like I love them, or, you know, on the first or second date, like, it is romantic to let them know. It is romantic to do this. Like, another great, great character that I, I'm thinking about making a video on, leave it down in the comments below, is Kelly, okay? Kelly is a very interesting character because all the things that I'm kind of talking about with Michael Scott, K 
Kelly does this as well. Like her obsession with Ryan, and then her relationship with Ryan, then her revenge on Ryan when she was dating Daryl. Kelly exhibits a lot of uh, of the same traits, right? And and so many things like that fear of abandonment and like telling Ryan that she was pregnant at one point and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, let me know uh, down in the comments below if you can relate to what I'm talking about with these intense emotions falling for people too quickly. Do you have an intense fear of abandonment? Do you become overbearing because of your fear of abandonment? You keep trying to do something or things for the other person to try to lock them down and keep them there. Is this becoming an issue in your life? By the way, if it is, get therapy. Talk to your doctor, see if they can recommend a therapist. Talk to your insurance company, see if they can recommend a therapist. I personally use BetterHelp Online Therapy. Um, I have an affiliate link down below with BetterHelp as well if you would like to give them a try. But there is help for this. I, it has taken me a long time to begin managing my emotions as well. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you like what I'm doing here and you would like to help support the channel and get involved in our monthly Q&A and some other perks and benefits, click or tap right there, all right? Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.